Hey guys, it's been a long time for another story time of Gage, but we're still finishing up on Pippi Longstocking. Today we we left off like a long time ago. I started with chapter one when Pippi moved into Villa Vilcula. And then when Pippi meets Tommy Annika for the first time. Well, let's go to chapter two. Chapter two. Pippi is a thing fender and gets into a fight. Annika woke up early the next morning. She jumped out of bed and ran over to Tommy. Wake up, Tommy, she cried, pulling him by his arm. Wake up and let's go. See that funny girl with the big shoes? Tommy was wide awake. And then instead, I knew even while I was sleeping that something exciting was going to happen today. But I didn't remember what it was, he said. As he yanked off the pajama jackets, off they went to the bathroom, washed themselves, brushed their teeth much, much faster than usual, and their clothes on, and their twingly of their whole hour before their mother accepted to them to come sliding down the banister and landing on the breakfast table. Down they sat and announced that they wanted their hot chocolate right at that very moment. What's going on? What happened today? That you're such a hurry, asked their mother. We're going to see the new girl next door, said Tommy. May we stay all day, said Annika. That morning, Pippi was busy making peppercators as a kind of Swedish wish cookies. She made an enormous amount of dough and rolled it up into the kitchen floor. You see? Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Because, said Pippi to her little monkey, what are earthly using as is a baking board? When one plan to make at least 500 cookies, and they lay on the floor cutting out cookie hearts for dear life. Start, stop climbing around in the dough, Mr. Nielsen, she, she said crossly. Just as the doorbell rang, Pippi ran and opened the door she was white as a miller from the top to toe. When she shocked, when she shocked hands heartily with Tommy Annika, a whole cloud of flour blew them. So nice to call, she said, and shocked her with a spray, shocked her apron. So, they, there came another cloud of flour. Tommy Annika got so much in their throat, they would, they could not help coughing. What are you doing? asked Tommy. Well, if I say I was sweeping the chimney, I won't believe me. You're clever, said Pippi. Fact, I'm baking, but soon I'll be done. You can sit on the wood box for a while. Pippi could work fast, she could. Tommy Annika sat and watched, watched how she went through the dough. How she threw the cookie onto the cook, cookie pan, and swung the pan in two. They thought it was, it was as good as the circus. Done, said Pippi at last and shut the oven door on the last pan with a bang. What are we going to do now? asked Tommy. I don't know. What are you going to do? said Pippi. But I know I can't lie around, but be lazy. I am a thing fender. And when you're a thing fender, you don't have to, a minute to spare. What did you say are you? asked Annika. A thing fender. What's that? said Tommy. Somebody who hunts for things naturally. What else could it be? said Pippi. 
as she sweeps all the floor left on the floor into a little pile. The whole world is full of things and somebody has to look for them. And just what a thing fender does, she finished. What kind of things? asked Annika. Oh, all kinds, said Pippi. Lumps of gold, orange feathers, dead rats, candy snap crackers, little tiny screws, and things like that. Tommy and Annika thought it sounded as if it would be fun and wanted very much to be a thing fenders, too. Although Tommy did say he hoped he found a lump of gold and not a tiny screw. We shall see what we shall we see, said Pippi. One always found some things, but we got to hurry up and getting and get going that some other think betters don't pick up all the lumps of gold around here before we can get them. Excuse me for a moment. All three think fingers now set up. They decide it would be, be best to begin hunting around the houses in the neighborhood because Pippi said that although it could perfectly will happen, that one might find a little screw deep in the woods still very bad where usual find where people were living though for the matter she said i seen the other way around too i remember one sub thing i was hunting for things in the jungle a brano right in the heart of the forest where no humans being had ever before set foot what do we support I found? Why, I very wooden fine leg. It gave it away later to a one-legged old man, and he said that a wooden leg like that wasn't has to be for the love or money. Tommy and Annika looked at Pippi and see how just a thing fetter acted. Pippi ran one side of the road to the other shaded her eyes with her hands and hunted and hunted. Sometimes she crawled about around on her hands and knees, struck her hands between the pickets of picket fences, and then she disappointed tone, oh dear, I was sure I saw a lump of gold. May we really take anything we found, asked Annika. Yes, anything that is lying on the ground, said Pippi. Presently, they came an old man lying sleeping on the lawn outside of his cottage. There, said Pippi, that man is laying on the ground, and we have found him. Found him. We'll take him. Tommy and Annika were usually horrified. No, no, Pippi! We can't take an old gentleman. We couldn't probably, said, said Tommy. Anyway, whatever would we do with him, he would do with him. Oh, there was plenty of things that we could do with him. We could keep him in a little rabbit hutch instead of a rabbit and feed him in a dandelicious but if you don't want to, I don't care. Though it does better to think that someone think betters may come along to grab him. They went on. Suddenly, Pippi gives in a terrific yell. Well, I never saw like that, she cried. And she picked up a large, rusty old tin can from the grass. What a find! What a find, cans! That something can you have never too many of. Tommy looked at the doubtfully what use for it. Oh, you can use it all sorts of ways, said Pippi. One day, 
is to put cookies in it, then it becomes a delightful jar with cookies. Another way, it's not to put the cookies in it, then it became without a jar. Tight cookies. That certainly it's isn't quite so delightful, but that's good too. She examined the can, which was indeed rusty and had a hole in the bottom. It looks like almost if were a jar without cookies, she said fully. But you put it over your head and pretend that it is midnight and that is just what she did. With the can in her head, she wandered around the block with a little metal tower and never stopped until she stumbled across a low wire fence with a fell fat on her stomach. There was a big crash but the tin can hits the ground. Now, see that? said Pippi, and took it off the can. If I hadn't had this thing of me, I hadn't fallen flat on my face and hurt myself terribly. Yes, said Annika, but if you hadn't had the can of your head, then you wouldn't have the trip on the wire wire fence in the first place. Before she had finished speaking, there was another trampled cry from Pippi, who was holding an empty spool of threads. It seems to be lucky day. It seemed to my my lucky day, she says. Such a sweet, sweet little spool of blow oh soap bubbles. Or with not to hang around my neck for the necklace, I'll go home and make her one this very minute. However, it's just that moment the gate is one of the cottage nearby. Open a boy came out rushing that he looked scared. And that was no wonder because heads over heel after him came a five other boys. They soon caught him and pushed him against the fence. And all five began punching and hit him. He cried and held his arm in front of his face to protect himself. Give it to him! Give it to him! Cried the older and strongest of the boys. So that he'll never dare to show himself on the street again. Oh, said Annika. It's Willie. They're hurting. Oh, how can they be? How can be so mean? It that's awful Bergeron. He always in a fight, said Tommy, and five against and one. What cowards. Pippi went up to the boys and tapped him and tapped Venture on the back, back with the four four fingered Hello there, she says. What's the idea are you trying to make hash of little Willie with all five of you jumping on him at once? Binger turned around and saw the little girl he had never seen before. A girl, a wild-looking stranger who dared to touch him. For, while he stood and gaped in her insolvent, then bore the grain spread over his face. Boys, he said. Boys let Willie alone and take a look at the girl. What a babe! And this is the pic. And here's a picture of five boys looked at the strange Pippi Longstocking. He slapped his knees and laughed. At instant, they have all flocked around Pippi, all except Willie who wiped away his tears and walked walked causely over beside Tommy. Have you ever seen hair like hers? Red as fire, such as shoes, Banter continues. Can't I borrow one? I'd like to 
roll around has anything boat. He took hold of a Pippi's braids and dropped them instantly and cried, Ouch! I burnt myself! All five boys joined hands around Pippi, jumping up and down and screaming, Redhead! Redhead! Pippi stood in the middle of the ring and smiled frankly ways. Benchard had hoped when she gets mad to begin to cry. At least she outed he have looked scared when nothing happened. He gave her a push. I don't think that had be a very nice with lady, said Pippi. And she lift him and, and and she lift him in her strong arms high in the air and carried him to the branch trees and hanging over the branch. Then she, and she took the next boys and hung him over another branch. The next one she sat on is a gate spart outside the cottage. And the next she threw right over the fence that that he landed on the flower beds. The last one of the fighters she put one tiny toy cart that that stood by the road. By the road. Then Pippi, Tommy, Annika, and Willie stood and looked at the boys for a while. The boys were absolutely speechless with fright. And Pippi said, You are cowards! Five of you, you attacking one boy? That you cowardly. Then you began to push the helpless little girl around. How, oh how mean. Come now, we'll go home, she said to Tommy Annika. And two, Willie, if they try to hurt you again, you come tell me. And Broder was sat on the tree and didn't dare to stare. She said, if there's everything else have to say about my hair or my shoes, if so, you better say it before I go home. So Bentred had nothing more to say about Peppy's shoes or about her hair either so Pippi took her can of one of her hand and her sprule and the other went away followed by Tommy and Annika when they were looking back in Pippi's garden said Pippi dear me how awful here I found two beautiful things you didn't give everything you must hunt a little more Tommy why you don't look in the hollow tree. Old trees are usually about the best price of the about the thing fenders. Tommy said that he didn't believe he and Annika ever said anything. But please, Pippi, he put his hand slowly down into the hollow tree trunk. Goodness, he cried, usually amazed and pulled him out of his hands, and he held a little notebook with a leather cover in a special loop, there was a silver pencil. Well, that's queer, said Pippi, said Tommy. Now see that, said Pippi? There's nothing so nice for being a thing fender. It wondered them ain't more people that take up. They will be taller and a shoemaker and a chimney sweep and such like, but thing fetters, no deeds isn't good enough. And she said to Annika, why don't you feel that an old tree stump? One practically find an old stump tree. Annika stuck, stuck her hand down in the stump and almost immediately got her red coral necklace. She and Tommy Annika stood open mouth for, for a long time. They were about to stay what either they would to be think betters every single day. Pippi has been half before midnight playing ball and now she suddenly felt sleepy. I think I'll have to go to take a nap, she says. Can't you come with me to the to the chunk in here? But Pippi was sitting on the edge of the bed, taking off her shoes 
And she looked at them, she said, He was going out rolling, he said, that old Brentford. She snorted. I'll teach him a roll indeed. Well, never time. Say, Pippi, said, said Tommy. Why do you wear such big shoes? So I can wiggle my toes, of course, she answered. Then she creeped into the bed. She always on her feet in the pillow and her head's in the way down to the underquilt that the way that she, they sleep in Guatemala, Guatemala, she announced. It is only real way to sleep to see like I wiggle my toes when I'm sleeping too. Can I go to sleep about a lullaby? She went on. I always have to sing myself self for for a while. Over why I can't sleep a wink. Tommy and Annika heard humming sound under the quilt. It was Pippi singing herself to sleep quietly and cautiously and they tiptoe out so they would have not disturb her. In the doorway, they turned to take a last look toward the bed, and they could see nothing to see Pippi except her feet and feet resting on the pillow. And there she laid, wiggling her toes in a prickly. Tommy and Annika ran home. Annika held her coral necklace tightly in her hands. That certainly was strange, she said. Tommy, you don't suppose to, to do you suppose that Pippi have put all things in the place before hands. You never can tell, said Tommy. You never can tell about anything when it comes to Pippi. And that's the end of chapter two. And I really hope you enjoyed that story. And I really hope you will join the last one I did. But if you could follow me or subscribe to my channel, with the, click the bell on for notification, or you can watch other ones on chapter one on the playlist of Storytime with Gage. And you sure and be sure. I'm Gage Ocasolo, and I approve this message. Peace.